Now, what exercises are good to improve your lumbar, your low back pain, or even your thoracic pain? One more time is a question that is difficult to answer because it all depends on the postural assessment that you do when we come here, that we do when you come here, you know. So all the exercises that we give you are always customized to your specific situation. But generally speaking, you can have different types of pain in the low back and in the thoracic spine. It's quite common to every 80% of the population at some point in life will develop low back pain, you know. Uh, it's an, the area of the body that is very propensed to injury uh, and most of these injuries are created over time by repeated trauma that sometimes we don't even realize, you know. One of the reasons that we sit and stand for too long and we seldom lie down during daytime, not part of our culture, so the disc is always under pressure. 8 to 12 hours of work will debilitate your disc, you will lose content of water, you will shrink it, you will press the nerve roots, you will compress the facet joints, you know. But what exercises are good for the spine, you know? You can have a flat low back if the pelvis is tilted backwards, or you have an increased curvature of a low back called hyperlordosis, usually if your pelvis is tilted forward. When you come to pattern some physical therapist, as you're standing looking at your posture, we're gonna check if your pelvis is level, if you have one side higher, higher than the other. We're gonna see if your pelvis is in the normal position or if it's anteriorly or posteriorly rotated, or if one side is, has more torsion than the other, which that usually will give you pain in the body in the sacroiliac joint, you know. So that's a more challenging case, you know. But once again, if you want your low back and your thoracic spine to heal, number one, they need to be in the proper posture or position to heal. So we all have a normal curvature of the lumbar spine and the thoracic spine. So that curvature in the low back does not need to be excessive or it doesn't have to be flat. But regardless of what type of curvature you have, one of the first exercises that I give to the majority of the patients is motion, because motion is lotion, you know. For the thoracic spine, I will give you axial extensions, which is picking up the chest. That will bring movement to the thoracic spine. If you have a flat thoracic spine, I'm not going to insist that you go far too high, but I'm going to insist that you go downwards to create more curvature. If you have kyphosis, if you have an increased curvature of the thoracic spine, I'm going to ask you that you pick up the chest higher to the ceiling. And you'll do it in a repeated way, usually three times ten, average. And that's going to bring movement to both the thoracic and the low back so you can decrease the stiffness and to lubricate the spine in the facet joints and to train your this to normal mobility because motion is lotion. Uh, if you have low back pain, we're gonna do pelvic tilts. Pelvic tilts, the pelvis is a big bone that is sitting on top of a ball of both hips and you can move it forward or backwards. If you move it repeatedly, like three times ten, you're gonna be bringing movement to the low back and one more time that's gonna help because motion is lotion. Now if your back is flat, I'm gonna insist that you bring the pelvis forward to increase curvature on the low back and normalize the mechanics of the spine. But if you have hyperlordosis, which is an excessive curvature of the low back, I'm going to ask you to bring the pelvis backwards, mostly, you know, to decompress the facet joints and to relieve them so you have less low back pain. Now, this might not work for everybody. I always consult for a physical therapy, but generally speaking, if you have low back pain that travels down to the leg, Sometimes you can reach as far as the toes, you know, that's 
usually a nerve pinching and nerve root and we call it radiculopathy. Now pay attention to this because this needs to be done in the proper position. How do you relieve pain from radiculopathy? We call it positional distraction and it needs to be done properly as I'm explaining here. If you have the radiculopathy going down to the right leg, you're going to lie down on your side and you're going to, so the painful side is on top. Then you're going to lie down on your side. Keep a pillow that keeps your neck neutral. Maybe this pillow is too flat for me. Then we're going to bend the hips and the knees at 90 degrees with the painful side on top. Be careful because if you do it on reverse, you're going to have the opposite effect. Once I'm on the side of a bell on my side, 90, 90 flexion in the hips and the knees, I'm going to drop the legs off the edge of the bed. And I'm going to let them dangle there. I can increase the positional distraction by picking up my arm over my head. And if I want further results, I'm going to pull the pelvis away. And I'm going to stay there for a minimum of two minutes. Sometimes you might hear a click. As long as you don't have pain, you have released the facet joint that was tight. And I just put one in my low back. It looks like that needed to be done on myself. Now, when I come out of a position, I'm going to activate my core. I'm going to pick up my chest. I'm going to try to come up without torsion in the spine because the disc in the spine does not like torsion or rotation. And my core active will protect it better. So, what I have just explained is the positional distraction for a radiculopathy. You have two vertebra, the disc is in between, and the nerve root exits the spine on each side. When the disc has shrunk, the two vertebras are pressing in that nerve root, and that will send the pain to either side. So, with positional distraction, I have lie down on my left, on my side, I have put the painful side on top and then I drop the legs off the bed and I'm doing this. So I have opened the two vertebra that were pressing on the nerve root and I have released that nerve root. That positional distraction is very effective, has worked well on many of my patients. Now, when you have a radiculopathy that is too intense, sometimes when you do that positional distraction, the sudden decompression of a nerve root will create more pain, but temporarily. And then they feel like a rush of relief. But if you do it on the opposite side, you're going to have the opposite effect. Because in case what? You're opening the low back that is on the top part to release the nerve root. But the lower part of the spine is going to be compressing the opposite. So always do it with the painful side on top. Now, regardless of what exercises we need, usually at the end of the treatments, you're gonna be put in a program of spinal stabilization for the low back or even for the upper back. How can we do some basic exercises to stabilize the spine? Stability is activating the core. And like I said before, the core is the deepest of the abdominals and the pelvic floor. Pelvic floor are the muscles that keep you from going to the bathroom. And those need to activate when you do efforts, like picking a baby or picking something from the floor with good posture and the activation of the core. In many people, the core is inhibited. So basic exercises to activate the lumbar core will be in this position. And that's a good position of, to relax, you know. Breathing deeply, two or three times in between other exercises is great ad advice to relax. But that diaphragm is the roof of your core on the very top. So taking a deep breath is activation of the core. Two or three times, inhale through the nose. 
take that air to the very low portion of your belly and then force your lips with an F or an S to exhale slowly two or three times in between exercises that's going to increase oxygenation in your body in general but believe it or not it's the basic core stability exercise then in the same position you can do low marches which is this <coughs> you pick up one leg no more than two or three inches and you maintain it in the air and as you do that more than activating the hip flexors you concentrate on squeezing the low belly below the belly button and the pelvic floor that are the muscles that keep you from going to the back you can do three times ten as you're alternating the legs you should count on one side only so you complete 30 times and when you have counted 10 times, you take that deep breath. And then 10 more until you complete 30 times. A more advanced exercise to activate the core is similar, only that you're gonna match your own force. The knee is gonna press against the hand. It's a clash force between the knee and the hand. You match your own resistance. More than strengthening the hip flexors, you need to concentrate in activating your core, low belly and pelvic floor. Another exercise that you can do with somebody is matching your own force. So you stand up here in front of me. You're going to put your hands like that heels of the hands together by the belly button you know so again you need to do it with the proper posture no slouching so we're gonna match our own forces so don't let me move you so I'm pressing down three to five seconds and then I will reverse it don't let me move you I'm pressing up so we're helping each other of course when I'm pressing down on her I'm activating my low belly and she's activating the multifidus in her low back to keep her from moving so we're helping each other when I press upwards on her guess what she's activating her low belly and her pelvic floor and I'm activating my back muscles so we're helping each other like good old buddies now if your partner has something better to do you can do this against the resistance of a table by pressing down on the table to activate your belly core and underneath the table matching the resistance of the table but don't lift the table to activate the multifidus in the back of the spine so i hope this is useful uh, we hope to see you here at patterson physical therapy when you have spinal pain or hips pain or knee pains, we'll always do you the postural examination. We're gonna give you specific postural advice and then we'll customize everything to give you the specific exercises that you need. Thank you very much, I hope this is useful.